So we sweat and we strain and today is the slow. Joe Orton, a young working class lad from Leicester, took an interest in the theatre and won a scholarship to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in 1950. Here he met Kenneth Halliwell, who was six years older and whose early life had been both dramatic and unhappy. His mother had died before his eyes after being stung by a bee, and when his father later gassed himself, it was Kenneth who found the body. Having inherited substantial means, Kenneth purchased a flat in West Hampstead and Joe moved in with him. They became very close and started a relationship. In spite of being indifferent students at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, Kenneth and Joe both had a strong literary ambition. They wrote novels together in the style of Ronald Furbank, but without being able to get them published. In 1959, Kenneth spent much of what remained of his inheritance on a small second floor flat at number 25, Knoll Street, Islington. Kenneth wrote a pile of novels that nobody wanted to publish and plays nobody wanted to perform. He and Joe amused themselves by stealing library books and defacing them by adding various obscene images. They were eventually discovered and prosecuted for stealing and damaging the library books. In May, 1962, they were each sentenced to six months in prison. The harsh sentence seems to have given Joe Zorton dormant literary ambitions a jolt. His play Entertaining Mr. Sloan became a surprise hit in 1964 and was praised by Terence Rattigan. When his black comedy Luke shot to fame in 1966 with rave reviews in the media, Joe was considered the most exciting young playwright in Britain. A witty, amusing character who was equally at home in a Chelsea bar as he was in some Soho club. In spite of his mainstream literary fame, he was sexually very promiscuous at a time when homosexuality was still a criminal offence. Kenneth Halliwell did not approve of Joe Orton's meteoric success. He himself remained incapable of getting anything published and as a result, he became increasingly morose and depressed. Joe had friends in all walks of life and many of those friends did not make a secret that they thought his boyfriend Kenneth a very strange man in more ways than one. A short, awkward man with an ill-fitting wig, Kenneth thought it was amusing to wear an old Etonian tie to which he was not entitled. He had little to say that was novel or interesting and many of Joe's friends disliked him. Many of Joe's friends thought it was only a matter of time before the wealthy and successful playwright left his dull boyfriend and the little flat at number 25, Knoll Road for good. On the 9th of August 1967, a driver came to take Joe Orton to Twickenham Studios for a meeting to discuss the script. Since nobody answered his knock, he had a look through the letterbox and saw a man lying on the floor. When the police broke down the door, they found that Kenny Halliwell had murdered Joe Orton with a repeated hammer blows to the head. He had then committed suicide through a massive overdose of Nembitual. The murder house at number 25 Knoll Road today has a blue plaque celebrating Joe Orton. Since it is placed at second floor level, many people miss it. Fittingly, the murderer, Kenny Halliwell, who brutally cut short Joe's very promising literary career, is not mentioned at all. His fame and notoriety remains that of a murderer.